Hi, this is Dan from userspice.com, and we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to take our time, and we're going to build a home server. Uh, the server is going to be geared around web development and IoT development. It's going to have um, Node.js on it, Node.red, Mosquito MQTT. It's going to have Apache, MySQL, PHP MyAdmin. Um, you're going to have the UserSpice framework for developing uh, PHP applications. It, there's going to be, we're going to take this little $35 Raspberry Pi computer and we're going to make something cool out of it. We're going to make a server to where you can allow it to handle all of your web development and all of the IT stuff in your house. And so we're going to need a couple tools. Um, first thing we're going to do to get it going, we're going to go to dietpie.com. And the reason why we're using DietPy is I want to force you to have a more command line experience because if you ever go to manage a real server, this is what it's going to look like. So we're going to go in here, we're going to download DietPy, and uh, you're just going to select whatever kind of board you have. We're going to do it on a Raspberry Pi. To be honest, it makes zero difference which Raspberry Pi you choose. Um, obviously, a newer one will be a little bit faster, but for the most part, uh, because we're operating this headless, in other words, we're not plugging a monitor into it, all the graphics and stuff are going to be handled by your computer, not the Pi. So it really, they're all going to run pretty well. But we're going to come in here, we're going to click this, and then you're going to download this image, and it'll come down here. Um, we're going to get a couple more tools that we're going to have just, just handy. Uh, the next one is called Belena Etcher, and um, basically it's something for burning SD cards. You may have something else. I kind of just recommend you use this one for this for this particular job. Um, another site I really like is called Ninite, and so if you go to Ninite, you'll see all these shareware, freeware applications, and uh, two you're going to want are WinSCP and Putty, and uh, if you don't have Notepad++, you might want to grab that too, but um, grab whatever applications you want and click Get Your Ninite, and then once you do, you can click this to install it, and even if you have them installed, it's just going to update them to the latest version and uh, tell me these are already up to date so I'm good to go and then there's one other application I like and it's called angry IP scanner and what it's going to do is let us search our network to find out um, what space we have free in the IP range now we may or may not use that in this project but I think it's a good one to have so anyway once your image downloads you're going to load up etcher um, so I'm going to load up etcher and then I think I'm going to load up Etcher. Let's try that again. There we go. I'm going to load up Etcher. And I'm going to select my image. And mine is, I'm going to skip that update for now. I've got it here on the desktop. And let's see, I've got it here on the desktop. And if I go to Diet Pie, normally you can leave them zipped up. This one you can't. Uh, so we're going to flash this. And this is going to take a minute or two. So I'm going to come back to you as soon as this is done flashing. Okay, I walked away, came back, and um, it was finished. Didn't take too long. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is, again, we're trying to make a headless install where you don't have to use a monitoring keyboard on the device itself. So what we're going to do is, you may know what your IP range is on your computer if or on your network. If you don't know, I'm going to show you how real quick. Um, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to type IP config. And you're going to see that right here, the IP address of my computer, the one that I'm on, is 192.168.95.148. So what you would do, um, what really matters is the 192.168.95. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Angry IP Scanner. And I'm not going to scan my network with you guys on here. But what you would do is you would do 192.168.95.1. All the way to um, 255, and you're going to scan this. And basically, what you'll notice is that there's going to be big gaps where there's nothing there. You're going to want to set the IP address to this um, of the Raspberry Pi to something empty where there isn't anything there. So I'm going to use 225 because um, I know there's nothing there. Now, one of these you can do in your router. You may not know this, but if you go into your router. <clears throat> you can choose what they call the DHCP range. And so you can decide that, all right, I'm only going to give out addresses of 1 to 150. 
And so basically any device that comes on your network and just asks for an IP address is going to get an address between 1 and 150. And then that would leave uh, 151 to 255 or 254 um, to for your IoT devices and things that you want to hard code the IP. And the reason why we're doing this is if the Pi were to reboot, you always want to know where it's going to be. You don't want to just leave it up to your router to assign an IP address for this thing. So what we're going to do... Um, one thing that happens is when you're finished burning, uh, Belena Etcher actually ejects the disk. So what we're going to do, I'm going to unplug the SD card, plug it back in, and it's going to pop up over here. And it might tell you you need to format it or something like that. Obviously, you don't want to format it. It's a Linux disk, and so that's why your computer isn't going to recognize it. But you'll see that there's this um, Diet Pi file here. Let's see here. That is awful. Let me see if I can open it with my code editor. Okay, so now let's see what this looks like. Hopefully it formatted a little bit better. Is it gonna load? There we go, that's prettier. Okay, so what you can do, um, I don't do this a lot, but what you can do is come in here and manually set up your network. So because I'm using ethernet, um, I'm gonna check here to see the ethernet is enabled, which is what I want. I'm going to use a static IP and I just showed you guys that I want mine to be at 95.225 and um, my router is at 95.1 and I'm going to use Google's DNS to begin with. Uh, we'll keep this, I'll tell you what, let's put this, uh, I'm just going to call it Spice Pie for the heck of it. We're not going to force anything here. If you wanted to, there's some other information. If you want to run this on Wi-Fi, there's some options to enable Wi-Fi from the beginning. The thing is, this is only going to happen on first boot of the Pi. So, what we're going to do is we're going to save this, which I already have, and then I'm going to stick this card in a Pi. I'm going to put the Pi on the network, and I'm going to boot it up. So, if you want, you're welcome to plug a monitor in and just watch all those Linux commands fly by on the Raspberry Pi. But if you don't have one, I would give it a solid 10 minutes and just let it boot, let it update everything, let it find itself on your network just go grab a sandwich come back and then what you're going to do is you're going to use this program putty and you're going to punch in whatever the ip address that you set up during setup so i'm going to do 192.168.95.225 and it's going to throw up this thing telling me that i'm going to get hacked I'm basically telling me that it doesn't know who the server is i'm going to hit yes because i know who the server is i just created it and now I'm going to log in with the name root and diet pi. And notice you're not going to see anything there on the screen. Um, now what it's going to do, a lot of times it's going to freak out about time. It doesn't know what time it is. Uh, we may come across that problem. If so, then we'll fix it. But um, anyway, so we're going to come here and I'm going to hit OK. I think hit OK. Let's see here. Scroll all the way down. Hit OK. And... It's going to go through and do some more Linuxy stuff. And I'm not going to make you watch all that. Okay, so that's about as exciting as watching paint dry. But after about five minutes, it'll come in here and ask you if you want to do a survey. You can choose to do the survey or not do the survey. I'm going to opt out on this situation. And then we're going to go through and see a bunch more things happen. So now it says it's updated. It's going to reboot. When it reboots, it's going to kick you off. So we're going to allow this thing to reboot and we're going to give the Pi maybe a minute to come back up and go through its, its uh, boot up procedure. And then we're going to come back here and reload Putty. So let's just give it a second and we'll come right back. Okay, so I think I've given enough time to boot. So I'm going to go back to my IP address. And you can save this, but um. A nerd, and I don't want to. I want to remember this stuff. All right, so I think it's uh, root and diet pi. Oh, I spelled pi wrong. There we go. So it's going to do some more stuff, and it's going to ask me if I want to update the password. And uh, we're going to let's see here. All right, so we're going to enter a new password. Change your Unix password, yes. Okay, 
So, serial console is enabled, but I like to disable it. Um, no. Thank you for asking. Now, what we're going to do is, uh, there's not really much we have to con we have to configure on this Diet Pie config. Um, so, what we're going to do is, we're going to do the fun part. We're going to go to the software. And so, we're going to come through here, and it's going to give us this big list of software. And so, we're going to look through here. We're not going to use a web browser. We're not going to use GIMP. Don't really need VNC right now. Cody, if you wanted to make some kind of media server, is kind of cool. But we're going to be um, web focused. So we're going to come through here, keep scrolling. We're not going to do any BitTorrent. Not going to do any movie serving. Um, own Cloud is pretty cool, but we're not going to use it. So let's see here. I know it takes a while to get to the important ones. We could do WordPress on here, but that's for sissies. So we're not going to do that. And keep scrolling. Docker, nope. Nope. So Grafana and InfluxDB, if you're into um, to web stuff, that's, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do those two. Uh, we may use those in a future video. We're going to come down. We're going to do Node Red because Node Red is awesome. We're going to do Mosquito. Um, some of you guys like Blink, so we'll go ahead and do Blink. Then we're going to come through here and we're going to do a LAMP server. So we're going to take. Apache, MariaDB, and PHP, and we're going to do PHP my admin. Uh, let's do certbot in case we want to do SSL certificates, and we don't need an FTP server because we have VPN. Uh, so we're going to hit OK. Now we're going to hit OK again. And we're going to hit OK again. And then we're going to come down here to Additional and just check to see if there's anything else in there that we want. Open SSH. I think we're good. So, Node.js. I think we're good because we already have the other one running. We have Node Red running. Vim, we're good. Nope. Okay. So, we're going to go to Back. And this is Dan coming back in from the future. One of the things you're going to want to do is going to make your life. A little easier is before you actually go down and install this software you're going to go to the ssh server and you're going to change it from drop bear to open ssh and so you're going to go over there open ssh and hit ok and install there we go i don't know what happened the first time so again this is going to be a little bit like watching paint dry but we're going to pop in and out because there are things that i want you to see as we're going through this process Okay, so that took about 20 minutes or so. It didn't ask me any questions. The only thing I had to do was hit OK once. Um, so we're going to hit OK, and we're going to let it reboot. And it's going to kick me off again, and we're going to come back and just see what happens. Okay, so we've done all the installing, and it didn't really ask us any questions. So we're just going to get a quick look at some of the things we've installed. Now, it's killing me to not give you all the details about how all this stuff works, but we're going to look at just a few things that we installed, and we're going to go over how to do all the uh, all the fun stuff in another video. But basically, I'm going to come over here. I've opened up a web browser, and I'm going to go to the Raspberry Pi. Um, 225 colon 1880 is the port that Node Red is on. And so this is Node Red, and Node Red is kind of a visual representation of Node.js, and it's really, really cool. I wish I had time in this video to give you all the understanding of how it works, but basically you can take things and connect them together, and I can come in here and take this string, and I can say hello um, for the pay, oh, we'll do world here, with a topic of hello, and I'm gonna just go to this debug thing, and then when I inject this, I send out a message on the, with the topic of hello and world. And, and that doesn't seem very interesting, but you can start mixing it together with MQTT where you can talk to um, your Arduinos. You can send it out with a WebSocket where you can connect to a website. You can send out um, HTTP requests and all kinds of different things. You can write functions and switch things and trigger things and make something go off every quarter of a second. And there's just all kinds of fun things that you can do and basically um, Node Red and MQTT are the glue that holds all of these different things together. You can mix your 
PHP with your JavaScript, with your Arduino, with your Raspberry Pi can all just come together in this beautiful thing called Node Red. And we're going to do some more videos about that, but I just want you to get excited about the fact that these two things are in there. Now, another thing you have is we have a full Apache web server. And so we're going to go to the same 192.168.25, except we're going to go um, PHP my admin. And yeah, we'll leave that. Um, and so you might be asked for the password. If you are asked for a password for that, it's uh, the username is PHP my admin and the, um, which here is the word, and the password is the one that you set during install. Uh, so anyway, this is a database manager. And if you give me just one second, I'm going to show you how to set up a full PHP framework on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go quickly to userspice.com and we're going to download user spice whatever version is the current version will be perfectly fine okay so now that you've downloaded the files um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the other program that we haven't used yet and it's called WinSCP. and so we are going to we're going to try this as an scp connection it's kind of my preferred way to do it and we're going to go into our ip address 192.168.95.225 and username root and the password you set before and um yeah that's fine we can add that and then what we're going to do it is most likely going to start you in this root folder which is not actually the root so we're going to go down one more folder and then we're going to go to var and www and if there's some files in here you can delete them and then you're going to drag the stuff that was inside the zip file that you downloaded from user spice and we're going to copy all that stuff over and that might take a minute and one of the things you'll notice is that these folders are coming in here as being owned by root. So when we're done, we're going to um, change the user of those files so that they're not root. They're um, www data that'll be a little bit more secure, a better way to run uh, PHP. So now that the files have copied, um, we're actually going to come down here. We'll go one folder deeper. And we're going to right click this and hit properties and we're going to set these as www data and we're going to tell it to set it recursively and just let it go through and update all of these um, files. So now what we have is we have a full Apache web server with MySQL on here. So we're going to go to 192.168.95.225 and then we're going to get rid of no colons just right there and voila we have an installer okay my eagle-eyed viewers might notice that I have changed uh, URLs and the reason for that is because the password gets put in in plain text uh, so that you can see what's up when you're um, installing user spice so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, install it on my local host but the procedure is the same so you can put in your time zone uh, so that you'll PHP will know when you're where you're at and you can put in either 127001 or localhost here uh, I put 127001 because that does not make a DNS query which makes it just a tiny bit faster your username is going to be PHP my admin mine is going to be root um, I don't have a password on this install but you're gonna put in whatever password you set up during your um, Raspberry Pi install and then you're gonna make up a database and I'm gonna say um, let's do uh, what is it what is this thing called um, we'll call it user spice that's fine so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this and it's going to tell me that there is no database called user spice and that's on purpose because I didn't create one now you could go into that PHP my admin thing that we were just in and create one but user spice can also do it for you so we're gonna let it do it it's gonna import the tables and then you can just finalize and it's automatically gonna update itself and then you can return to the dashboard so I'm automatically logged in but you probably won't be so you can use admin and password and accept the terms of conditions that you have sold your firstborn to us. Um, but anyway, you have this complete dashboard where there are, um, for one, for some reason, my little uh, chart here is a little jacked up. But anyway, you have this complete dashboard, which is a full PHP framework and you can manage registration settings you can access the database you can um, set all kinds of permissions and password resetting and you can install plugins and, and all kinds of stuff in there and we're going to get into that stuff in a future video 
But, um, or in fact, you can check any of my other videos for this. So anyway, this is about all we have time for today. Um, I just wanted to get you up and running. We're going to do some more videos on how to um, mix PHP and all these other things together. But I hope you enjoyed it. hope you made your own server. And we will come back in a video soon and show you some cool stuff you can do with it.